all love a little bit of sweet, but nothing quite beats those sweet and savory or sweet and sour combos. Something I'm proud to say the Chinese have been doing for centuries. In this episode, I'll show you how to harmoniously blend the sweet and the savory to create three mouthwatering Chinese takeaway dishes. Banana fritters, a Chinese style donut ball filled with hunks of warm banana and smothered in golden syrup. The much loved hoisin mixed vegetables, gloriously sweet, fragrantly aromatic and spicy all at once. But to start off with, these Chinese style barbecue spare ribs served with honey make a great sweet and savory snack to eat at any time. I personally don't think you can get a better get in there with your hands eating experience. Perfect finger food. So here we have this wonderful parcel of porky goodness on the bone still. And I did ask the butcher, can I have a pack of ribs approximately all the same size? Because I want to ensure that when we cook these, they're all cooked at the same time. They're going to be falling off the bone. They're going to be juicy, lovely, sweet. Oh my God, can't wait. So I'm going to get my gloves on for this because I am going to get my hands in there in a second. If you don't have gloves, just use your hands. So on go the gloves. And you can see I have some beautifully prepared pork ribs. Um, they're all about the same size, got loads of meat on there, nice big bone running through the middle of it. And I'm just gonna pop them into my baking tray. We'll get rid of that, bring this over. Now, before I get my hands mucky and dirty, I'm just gonna take my ginger and we're gonna get two slices. This is only approximate as well. The ginger's there to give it background heat, to give it that Cantonese aromat flavor, okay? So we're gonna take a couple of chunks of ginger with the skin on, is absolutely fine. And we'll pop this into the marinade, okay? Uh, we have some sugar, so that sweetness is gonna come from the other ingredients, but let's get some sugar in there, which can just go over. This is followed by five spice. If you can get yourself to a Chinese supermarket, please do so, because it makes all the difference when you're making this dish. Um, I have one cinnamon stick, which is going in, and two of these beautifully looking star anise, okay? So in they go as well. Um, this is Chinese rice wine. So this is made from fermenting the rice, and we get this beautiful, brown liquor that's pungent and aromatic and that's going to go over my ribs um, there is sugar in here and i did say honey but we're going to put a little bit more extra honey in so we're just going to ooze that all over my ribs just trying not to waste any and then the dark one so we've got two so this is my yellow bean. So this is yellow beans from naturally fermented um, soya beans. And this is hoisin sauce. So let's get in the hoisin sauce. And this is, if you could smell this, if this was smell of vision if you could smell this, this is like when you walk into a wonderful Chinese supermarket or a fantastic restaurant or takeaway, this is what it smells like, okay? The yellow bean is sweet. It's brown <laughs> it's lovely. I don't know what else to say. There's only so many th ways you can describe yellow bean sauce. And lastly, I have my minced garlic. So I'm just gonna add in my minced garlic. Again, this is another Cantonese aromat, and this is just gonna help flavor those ribs. So your job now is to make sure that every piece is covered with all of the ingredients. So take your time with this, get both hands involved and just massage this lovely marinade into those pieces of rib. And you won't be disappointed when we finally do cook them up. You just can't beat it. So there we have it. Just clean off the sides, Let's take my gloves off try not to make a mess doing this. Now, all I'm going to do is pop these to one side. You can do this the night before. 
So get the marinade mixed in, pop a, pop a cover over the top of it, a bit of cling film, and pop it in the fridge overnight. Um, me, I can't wait that long, so I'm gonna give them about two hours. So I'm just gonna leave them on the side. So I'm not popping them in the fridge. They're gonna stand in the room temperature or an ambient temperature, and they're just gonna sit there. And those flavors, that barbecue sauce, that hoisin sauce, the sugars, the honeys, the garlics, the gingers, are just gonna impermeate that meat. And it's gonna, not only is it gonna flavor it, it's gonna help tenderize it as well. So there we have it, guys. Pop back in a second and I'll show you what we do next. Pour over two cups of chicken stock, cover with a lid or baking foil and place in a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius for around 35 to 45 minutes. Then remove from the oven and turn the ribs. Ribs have been in the oven for about 35, 40 minutes now. And I'm just gonna turn them around. Well, the trick is, to um, leave the lid off when they go back in. So, in fact, you know what I'm gonna use? My tea towel. I'm just gonna grab my ribs and I'm just gonna pop them back in the oven. They want about another 40, 45 minutes. Um, this sauce will naturally evaporate and um, the ribs by then hopefully will be nice and tender, ready for the honey dressing. So my ribs have finally finished after an hour and 20 minutes of slow cooking in a moderately hot oven. And now it's that perfect moment because it's serving time. And I'm just gonna baste them a little bit in this lovely barbecue sauce or Chinese char siu sauce. And we just arrange these on our chopping board. And I can tell already that they're going to be melting the mouth. You know, the charring, this fantastic charring that we've managed to get is just adding to the flavour. So I bet you're all wondering why, when you buy your ribs from a Chinese takeaway or restaurant, they're bright red. Simple answer to that is they use food colouring and you really don't need to use food colouring. I think these look fantastic. Like I say, just take your time with this and make sure that each of these pieces are covered in this sweet barbecue sauce. There you go. Let's just pop that over there for a second. Perks of the job. And now, honey. So remember we cooked with a little bit of honey and now we're gonna finish off with that final drizzle of sweet nectar. And just for colour and no other reason whatsoever, I'm just going to give this a scattering of spring onions. And there we have it. My Chinese takeaway style, barbecue spare ribs served in a honey glaze. And the last thing I need to do, and I'm gonna have this one, and I know it's down there, because this is the best bit. I don't know if you can see that. This bit is gonna be the best. Sweet goodness. Now on to one of my all-time favorite vegetarian dishes, my sweet and spicy hoisin mixed vegetables. The beautiful thing about this dish, and not only the big chunky vegetables, the sweet, sticky, spicy, brown <laughs> sauce, it all cooks in one pan. So there's no washing up to do afterwards. Look at these, these are weird, aren't they? That's the bamboo shoot. So if you've never seen a bamboo shoot, um, that's what it looks like before you get it canned. Now, I, will, I was very lucky that I managed to source whole bamboo shoots because I want these nice and chunky. And this is the beauty of this dish, that we actually get the crunch of each of those vegetables. You know, the, the, the myriad of flavors from this 
amalgamation of all these wonderful ingredients. And they're all chopped. My wok is getting hot already. I'm just gonna turn this up ever so slightly. If you're a non-meat eater, this dish delivers on so many levels. We've got the crunchy water chestnuts. We've got the sweet and crunchy carrots, the soft, slimy, you could even say, straw mushrooms. We have the um, unique flavor of bamboo shoots because they're, they're crisp. They're not really crunchy, they're, they're more crisp as you bite into them. And then we've got baby corn as well. And you know, mixed, mixed with the aromats of the garlic and ginger, and then finished off with a creamy cashew nut. This dish is gonna knock your socks off and anybody else you're cooking it for. So, we start with a squirt of oil and I'm just gonna add my onions at this point. It doesn't matter if a few mushrooms go in at the same time. Now this is just gonna help me regulate the heat in that pan for when my garlic and ginger go in. So there's my minced ginger and my minced garlic. Now in for my mushrooms. And I'm adding these in stages, but the simple reason is I don't want the wok to get too cold. And I haven't got this flamethrower that I would have in a normal restaurant or takeaway. So I can control the heat as we're cooking. Now in go my wonderful chunky bamboo shoots and the baby corn. And I'm saving the crunch till last so they can go in in a second. Because when we eat this, this isn't only a mixture of vibrant colors of the browns and yellows and the whites. We've got the oranges, we've got the rich brown sticky hoisin sauce. Okay, so just before my crunchies go in, let's add this chili flake. Now there's that background heat I was talking about. And now go my crunchies. So that's just water chestnuts and carrots. And we're just gonna give that a minute or so just to soften. I want the vegetables to maintain or retain their bite without being overcooked. And this will only take a minute or so. I introduced this dish purely because I'm not a massive vegetable eater, but because the sauce is such an amazing, sweet, lovely is probably the best word for it. It makes me eat my vegetables. It's so tasty. And again, for the vegetarians or for vegan friends, ve vegan, this is actually vegan as well. So vegetarian or vegan friends, this is the perfect dish. You don't realize, I mean, as a meat eater, you're not missing out. There is nothing to miss out. Hoisin sauce, really important ingredient. And it's gonna add that depth of sweetness and aromat and mix with those chilies really is going to give you something quite unique. And then we have rice vinegar. If you don't have rice vinegar, you could use another, but the rice vinegar is just going to give you that, just that tiny, subtle tartness, sour note that makes this dish so amazing. And there we have it guys, one quick last toss, just make sure that everything's warmed through and no one can tell me after they've cooked this that they say or can say even that stir fries are boring because this is far from boring. 
let's just get rid of that. Now, I've got the cutest little wok in the world that I'm going to serve this dish into. Let's start off like that, pop that there, and then finish this off. So you have to move fast as well in the kitchen. Now, two last things you're gonna do. We always finish off with a tiny drizzle of sesame oil for that background nutty note. And you don't wanna crush all of these, but a quick crumble of cashew nuts. And this makes our dish complete. My spicy yet sweet hoisin mixed vegetables with creamy cashew nuts. In my opinion, if you have a sweet tooth, Dinner is not complete without a dessert. So what is it about deep fried bananas in a batter with golden syrup? Well, if those words didn't convince you, let me just show you how amazing this dish is and why it's pretty much everyone's favorite. So we're just gonna use a couple of bananas to make this nice and quick. So you've probably noticed I've got a pan of oil on, my, on the stove already, so my wok's full. I'm going to try and get it up to about 170 and I'm going to chop these into three equalish sized chunks and give them a quick dusting in flour. This is just going to help the batter stick to it and we're just going to pop these into my pre-made batter. To make the batter you'll need a large mixing bowl, self-raising flour, bicarbonate of soda and a glass of cold water. Slowly add the water to the dry ingredients mixing as you pour. You're aiming for the consistency of, well, the only way to describe it is thick wallpaper paste. Run your spoon around the sides of the bowl to gather up any of those dry ingredients lingering there. And don't worry if there are a few lumps in the batter. So back in the restaurant, this dish was always served with toffee apples. So it was toffee apples and banana fritters and the customers would go crazy for it because they knew exactly what they were getting. And it was that sweet hit that I think you need sometimes after a, especially, you know, an aromatic savory dish. So there's my bananas in my batter. My oil is nearly at temperature, but I'm gonna go for it and we're gonna see what kind of sizzle we get and you can just claw into the banana. So just dabbing it off, now slowly dropping it into the oil. They're only gonna take about two minutes to fry. So by the time I've got the first one in, or by the time I've got the last one in, we're gonna be looking at turning the first one. Now this batter, it's, it's amazing. If your oil's hot enough as well, these will not be greasy. And I think this is my last one. And I'll just pop that to one side. Now, just taking a pair of chopsticks or tongs, it's completely up to you. Just give them a stir around in the oil. And we're just gonna try and get an even brown coating. I say the bananas, you can eat raw anyway, as you know. So we're just literally warming these through. And once we get this golden, crispy brown coating, chef's perks. I'm having that bit in a minute. They'll be ready to get out this oil. And nothing better than serving this with a big blob of ice cream. But the star, as well as the banana, is that there's just something about golden syrup. Okay, so I'm just literally gonna turn the heat down just a little bit. So I want to make sure the inside's nice and warm. It doesn't need to be center of the earth. I think sometimes you go to these takeaways or restaurants and they've been cooking for ages and you bite into it and then that's it, you're scarred for the next three days. You really don't need to. You just need to make sure they're nice and crispy. And I don't know if you can hear that. We're just getting that coating on the outside. Right, let's go and grab my wire rack and 
I'm going to turn the heat off and just carefully, one by one, we're just going to drain. Now you do want to let these sit for about five to six minutes before you think about serving because the last thing we need is a kitchen casualty. Couple left to go and we're going to be in golden syrup heaven. Right, let's just give those a minute or so and then we can serve. Okay, and let's just dress these into my bowl, piling them up, ready for their bath of golden syrup. Now there's nothing more satisfying than a hot banana smothered in golden yumminess. Okay guys, I promised you a chaster. Be careful, they're hot. Come and grab one. You've had one already. That one's mine. And there we have it, three sweetly satisfying treats for you to try at home.